Okay, I hope all of you had a great holiday period and uh, you were all safe and hopefully I think in two or three months we will be able to welcome you back to our campus because uh, as I can see now, the trend uh, of the COVID epidemic, it uh, seems to be slowing down, that's good news and let us be positive, okay, fine. So I'm still into I'm still into a system of homogeneous uh, linear equations represented by represented by the matrix equation this okay so I had uh, already discussed about uh, what happens when the characteristic equation corresponding to that uh, coefficient matrix it has real roots it has real roots okay. So now let me move to complex. Let me move to complex. Okay. So uh, there are a couple of theorems. I mean, which I just uh, give you the statements, or I'll just uh, give those theorem as some facts. Okay. Say uh, now I need complex rules. Okay. Right. So if say alpha plus i beta. Uh, your where your alpha beta, their real numbers, and of course you know that uh, i is nothing but the imaginary number given by square root minus one. Okay, so if uh, alpha bit, alpha plus i beta uh, is a root of the I mean characteristic equation. <coughs> K minus lambda i is zero with with your say corresponding alien vector uh, say k. So uh, see generally what I have been doing, I'm uh, putting a bar over this. Uh, K, like say, whenever I represent a vector, I am putting a bar over it. But now, I mean, for this one, because uh, this K is going to have these entries as complex numbers. So, if I put a bar over K, that is going to have a different meaning. So, that is why, for the time being, uh, please bear with me. So, although I am going to be using bar over X, X1, and X2 in order to designate them as vectors, but for this, I'm not going to do it. So you please uh, like uh, remember that this k is a vector. Okay, fine. So this corresponding alien vector k. So then, then of course k is going to have a complex entries. Then k bar is an this alien vector corresponding. To the your, you know that I mean the complex root they are going to occur in conjugate pairs, right? So that is why if alpha plus i beta is a root of the characteristic equation, so then alpha minus i beta is also going to be a root of the characteristic equation, right? And of course, uh, this k bar is nothing but the complex conjugate of this vector k. Is it okay, everybody? Fine, I think uh, you already know this, but uh, there are uh, certain things associated with this. I want to do that. So, uh, this you may consider as fact one, or this may, uh, you may consider as uh, theorem one. And then let me see how the uh, I mean, solution is going to look like with these given facts given by this theorem or say this statement. Okay, so let us try to read that. Fine. Okay, so this is my 
characterize the equation. Okay. So let us assume that lambda equal to alpha i beta is the root of the characteristic equation. So you know that its complex conjugate is also a characteristic group. So that means a uh, lambda bar. Okay. So then you know that you know that this k, if k is the eigenvector corresponding to this eigenvalue, so then k lambda t and your k bar e to the power lambda bar t they are going to be they are going to be the solution of the system of equations given by this is it okay with everybody right yes sir yes sir yes so now what we are going to do, we are not going to substitute them directly. We are not going to substitute them directly. So what is going to happen? Like if I take any linear combination of these two, linear combination of these two, right? <clears throat> of course, I mean, they are, they, are, they are linearly independent. You can easily check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, then what is going to happen? What is going to happen? The linear combination is also going to be another root. Is it okay? Fine by matter of superposition. So now, let us consider the vectors, uh, this one. Let us consider the vector, this one. Um, No, just let me let me know. So let us let, let, let us just uh, consider that one. Yeah, that, that, that is fine. So now let, let, let me see what I move to the second one. So okay. this is of course this one. And uh, x2 I by 2 this just 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 have a look at uh, those two please have a look at those two okay fine see the, these two are nothing but linear combinations of the original I mean, solution vectors here Right? So definitely, definitely, they are also going to be forming solutions of the original uh, system of differential equations given by this. Okay, and uh, you can easily check for the linear independence of x1 and x2. Okay, so now let us see what shape this x1 and x2 takes. So this one, uh, what is going to happen? This I can write it as r. Uh, so then. Okay, so then this is going to be <clears throat> see lambda to alpha plus i beta, right? So lambda bar is simply alpha minus i beta. Okay, so from e to the power lambda t and e to the power lambda bar t, from both of them, your e to the power alpha t is going to be common. Is it is it okay with everybody? Right. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, e to the power alpha t, it is going to be common from every bar. So, now, for from here, it is going to be what? e to the power alpha t into e to the power i beta t, right? For, for this one. So, e to the power i beta t is simply cos beta t plus i sin beta t, right? So uh, similarly, similarly, when I am using <coughs> uh, uh, your lambda bar t, so that is going to give me that is going to give me plus k bar your cos beta t minus i sine beta t, isn't it? Okay, I'll I'll come back to this later on. Fine. So now this is going to give you this. You can see. Uh, 
let me write it like this. Is it okay? Fine. I, I, I'll just stop there. I, I'll come back to this later on. But let me concentrate on the other one. Let me concentrate on the other combination that I am choosing as solution. So absolutely recall minus k so, uh, this. Okay. So then, then, as before, as before, uh, what I'm going to have, obviously, I'm going to have the power of a t. So then, I'm going to have your i by 2 here, minus k, and then here, plus k bar. Uh, as before, it is going to be cos beta t, right? Is it okay? And uh, then again, i by 2, uh, what is going to happen? If you am I okay? Because say this is going to be cos beta t plus i sin beta t, so this minus comes from there, and this is going to be cos beta t minus i sin beta t, isn't it? Right? So, so there will be one more item uh, that is with sin beta t. So i into i is i square, which is minus one. Ah, so, uh, so uh, yeah, so sorry, uh, just uh, so, so yes, you are right. So, there is going to be another like this, okay? Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Now it is okay, fine. Okay, so now let us, let us try to now, now let me come back to this and then I am going to substitute here, okay. So now, if you look at this, this is obviously the real part of uh, K, isn't it? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Fine. This is nothing but the real part of K. So let me define by V1 as real part of K. Okay? And now, if you look at this, if you look at this, this is, this is going to give you what? This is going to give you what? I into imaginary part of K, isn't it? Only, only this part. Is it okay to everybody? Fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? That together with this I, this is going to be minus 1. Is it okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Fine? So that means, that means this part, this part, this part, I can simply write as if V1 is this and this, I can simply write this as your V1, V1 cos beta t minus V2 sin beta t e to the power alpha t. Fine? I think this is visible to everybody. Right? B1 cos beta t minus B2 sin beta t whole and e to the power alpha t. Is it okay? Fine. So now if you if you look at this again, if you if you look at this part again, so then this is simply this part is simply minus i by 2 k minus k bar, right? And this k minus k bar is nothing but i into imaginary part of k. 
is it okay fine so these together with this minus sign this is going to give me simply one is it okay yes can you see the adjustment here can you see the adjustment see yes, this sir. part this part i can write it as i by 2 k minus k bar and k minus k bar k minus k bar this is simply what i into imaginary part of k right so this is going to give me what minus i square so that is simply one is it okay so that is why that is why this i can write as this i can write as simply v2 cos beta t v2 cos beta t and then then again here this minus i is going to come out so minus i square that is simply one Okay, and k plus k bar divided by two is simply real part of k, so that is nothing but b one. So this is b one your sine beta t into the power alpha. So basically, what I have got, basically what I have got, I have got your x one is this and X two is is it okay, everybody? Yes, sir. Right. So what yes, you need, what you need to do? Thank you. What you need to do? Simply, you find out one complex uh, again value. You know that its complex conjugate is also going to be another again value. So then you find the corresponding again vector, right? Once you find the corresponding again vector, you don't even have to find the other corresponding again vector. You simply Find out the real and imaginary part of the eigen vector and uh, plug in this formula. That's it. okay. So let, let us try to do one one example. So then it is going to be clear to you. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, basically, what we have got, we have got x one. This is equal to b one cos beta t minus b two sine beta t. Equal to our alpha t and x two equal to b two cos beta t plus b one sine beta t equal to our alpha. T. That's it. Okay. So let us try to work out. And of course, you know that b one b two are nothing but the real and imaginary parts. Of the eigen vector corresponding to one of the eigen vectors. That's <clears throat> just a bit. Two eight minus one minus two. So okay. So we 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 are going to solve this. We are going to solve this. Okay. So you know that uh, if I try to find out the characteristic equation, so this is going to give me what two minus then not eight minus one minus two minus then that. So uh, what I have. Uh, I have got what? Square minus four plus eight, right? Okay. 
Is it okay? Fine. So this yes. is lambda squared plus four, right? So therefore, therefore your uh, lambda equal to plus minus two i plus minus four. Is it okay? Fine. And this is making our life uh, a bit simpler because you know that this is to power lambda t uh, that is simply going to be equal to one. Is it okay? Right? Because alpha equal to zero here. Right? Beta equal to two. So uh, you will see that there are certain tricks uh, I mean involved with uh, complex rules. So then then if I want to find out, if I want to find out the eigen vector corresponding to say the eigen value. Two i. Uh, so suppose I am I am considering it on this. Uh, so this is simply going to give me two minus two i, then eight minus one two i. Just uh, just 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 look at just look at uh, this this entry. Uh, just look at this entry. There is some interesting fact. So, if you multiply this, if you multiply this with its uh, complex conjugate, then so basically, if I am multiplying rho one by the complex uh, conjugate of this element, then you will see that what we get definitely it is two square plus two square. That is eight. Right? Is it okay, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Eight. And uh, this is going to give me eight into two minus two i, right? Um, just a minute. So eight into two plus two i. Uh huh. So eight, eight into uh, eight into two uh, two minus two by eight. yeah that, that, that I understand. Uh, no, I I want one to be the multiple of the other. That that is what my point is. My conjugate two plus two i two plus two i into r one. Ah ah yes 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 complex conjugate is two plus two i sorry. Okay, so then here you are going to get uh, a, and this one is going to be two plus two i, right? Okay, fine. So then you can see that this one and this one are the scalar multiples of each other. Is it okay with everybody? Yes, sir. Right. So that is why this is eventually going to be equivalent to. Two minus two i eight zero zero is it? Yes, sir. I'll I'll tell you. If you do R two is R two plus uh two plus two i by Eight into R one, you are going to get this. Am I okay? Right? You simply divide it by eight with this, isn't it? Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So yes, sir. that is why we are going to get this. Huh? So uh, you know, I mean, I, I have taken this example from from I mean, Jill and Kudan. You will find this particular example there. Huh? There. And again, they are again taking some multiple. Like I said, they are taking multiple of this. I mean, uh, two plus two i. Uh, in in that way, they are finding out the eigenvalues. Uh, I am not going to do that because whatever you sorry eigenvectors. So whatever you do, eventually it is going to give you the same answer. Hmm? I am guaranteeing it that. So what I am going to do here, I I I would rather I would rather uh, do like this. I will never do like this. Zero, zero. Okay. So then you know that uh, if I if I if I take 
uh, minus 4 and 1 minus i as my again vector, it is going to work, right? Is it okay? Minus 4 into this plus 4 into 1 minus i. That is going to work. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes. Right? Yes, sir. So I am taking k as this. I am taking k as this, right? So uh, that means this is simply minus 4 1 plus i your uh, 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1. Is it okay? Fine. So therefore, therefore, what I get, therefore, I get. So B1, so this is equal to minus 4, 1 and B2 is equal to 0 minus 1. Is it okay? Fine. See, uh, basically we have to solve this equation subject to this initial bounds. Okay. Uh, you may be thinking like uh, this is going to be straightforward. Of course, this is going to be straightforward, but I would like to show you something more associated with this. Okay, fine. So let me get rid of this. So therefore, x1 that is equal to your b1. B1 is minus 4 1 and then cos 2t minus b2 is your 0 minus 1 sin 2t and of course this is equal to our 0 t, right? So this is going to give me like it is like this. Uh, yeah, let me keep it like this. Uh, so this is simply 1. Okay, and then x2, x2 equal to your b2, 0 minus 1 cos 2t, and then plus b1 minus 4 1 sin 2t. Okay, fine. And uh, now, that, that means you know that the general solution is, and of course, if these two are linearly independent, there's no doubt about this. Okay, so it is going to form a fundamental set of solution. So that is why the general solution is given by this equal to C1x1 plus C2x2. Okay, so now I have to find out this uh, particular solution corresponding to that initial condition. Okay. Fine. So now if I plug in x0 equal to minus 2, 1, so basically what is going to happen? Say so this is minus 2, 1. So this is equal to now you know that the, the, the sign part is going to give you simply 0. Is it okay with everybody? Right? So that means I am going to have c1 minus 4, 1 plus C2, 0, 1. Is it okay with everybody? Right? Yes, sir. Right? So that, that is why I, I kept it like this. Okay, because I, I wanted to repeat the initial condition so that I mean again clapping this E is not going to serve me any purpose. So I can do that uh, do like this. Uh, 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1. Okay, fine. So now, if I want to solve for, I mean, C1 and C2, so basically what uh, I have to solve, I have to solve for, I have to solve for this augmented matrix. I have to solve for this augmented matrix. 4, 0, minus 2, and uh, 1, minus 1, 1. Is it okay with everybody? Are you, are you comfortable with this? What, what I am doing here? Yes, sir. Yes? Okay. So, uh, rather what I am going to do, I am going to exchange these two. 
So one minus one one four zero minus two. One minus one one minus four zero minus two. Okay. So now let me make this zero. Let me make this zero. So basically, I am multiplying this with one four and adding with this, right? So this becomes zero if you multiply it with four and with this. This is going to be minus four. Multiply this with four. This is going to be two. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Fine. So eventually, I am going to get. I am going to get simply one minus half, right? So here, here, I am. I am going to go get after some transformation, right? So that gives you. That gives you your c two equal to minus half, right? C two equal to minus. Oh, this part is not really useful to you. Uh, maybe I will write here. Yeah. C two equal to minus half, right? And then C one is going to be one plus C two, right? C one is going to be equal to one once you transpose to the right hand side, one plus C two. So that means one minus half. So C one equal to plus. Is it okay, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. So now, so that is why that is why my solution will be given by c one x one plus c two x two. So therefore, therefore, uh, the solution is c one is half into this minus half into this. Is it okay? Fine. Okay. So yes. let me let me walk this. Let me walk this. And again, see, although I have written implies, huh? You see, in exam, if you write exactly like this, I am going to slash points. Okay. So you write that this system reduces to the augmented matrix. This you write something like that, and because as mathematicians, you need to be precise. Okay, fine. Although definitely this implies, but this what is this? You have to write about that, right? Okay. So uh, this is going to give me. Okay, let me see what. Uh, C or cos uh, or cos. What I have? This is going to be minus two. This is going to be minus two cos t, and then this is going to be minus two cos two t, and uh, then this is a, this is also zero, and this is minus four into half. Plus two sine two k. Then this is going to give me half cos t, and then plus half cos two t. This two goes out. Is it okay? Say this is half cos two t. Oh no, this doesn't go 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 out. Say this is half cos two t minus half into one plus half cos two t. So Cos two t. What about this? Sine two t minus half. Uh, this is going to be minus minus plus. So half sine two t minus half sine two t. This two goes out. Is it okay, everybody? Yes. Yes, sir. Right. So this is my solution. So this is my solution. Okay. Fine. So uh, now I would like to show you this solution graphically, and see uh, in your uh, Gilles and Poulenc book they have done it in a different.
different way. They have done it in a different way. Uh, but eventually, I think, just a minute. Uh, there is a plus minus uh, something. Their solution, Julian Pullen and my solution, so there is a plus minus difference. Somewhere I missed something. Okay. C1. X1, X2, I don't know whether I have uh, like interchange X1 or X2. Huh. But uh, in, in GL and uh, they are getting it as uh, 2 cos t minus 2 sin t, and this they are getting it as minus cos 2 t. Uh, you, you please check, huh? You please check. I may have made some silly mistake here somewhere. You please check why that, that, that is happening. I, I should actually get the same result. Uh, so plus minus sign, hopefully I have made a mistake. This is C2 equal to minus R. This is the minute. This is the minute. This is This is so it's because of uh, initial conditions. Uh, initial condition, what I, I, I have written as 2 minus 1. Or initial condition, did I write it differently? Yes, sir. They are taking its negative 2 and minus 1. 2 and minus 1. Oh, they are taking as 2 as minus 1. Okay, anyway. <coughs> My solution is correct. I'm under that one. Okay. Okay, fine. <clears throat> I'll, now, uh, what I'll do, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you uh, the solution graphically. So, uh, hopefully you have understood the concept of uh, phase diagram, right? Phase diagram was it clear to everybody. The other day when I explained it to you. Phase portrait, phase diagram. Was it okay with everybody? Uh, see, I, I, I give you the simplest of examples. Oh, simplest of examples. See, suppose, suppose as the solution of the given system of differential equation, suppose I, I got the solution as a, this cos t, y equal to sin t, right? So then, then you, you know that, I mean, uh, the, the solution is going to look like okay. And then it, it, it is going to look like this, right? It, it, it is going to look like this. Is it okay? Is it okay? Fine. Is it okay with everybody? If if say this is your y, if this is x. My solution is going to look like this, isn't it? Yes, sir. Right? So now, now, if I consider, if I consider the xy plan, if I consider the xy plan, you know that, and, and this is t line, huh? this is t line, this is xy. So then, initially, what is the coordinate? What is the coordinate? 1, 0. Isn't it? So, 1, 0, right? And when it is pi by 2, it is 0, 1. When it is uh, what? Pi? Is it? Am I, am I fine? Hmm? When it is pi? Am I okay here?
See, okay. Now, what is going to happen? You simply take as t is increasing, as t is increasing, you simply take the corresponding corresponding points here, corresponding values of x and y. This is this is x, this is y. Okay. So obviously you know that. I mean, if you uh, eliminate t from there, this is going to give you a circle, right? x squared plus y squared equal to one. But how the circle is going to evolve? It is going to evolve something like this. Okay, this is the location at t equal to zero, right? At at t equal to pi by two, t equal to pi by two, this is going to be the location. And then at t equal to pi, at t equal to pi, this is going to be the location. t equal to three pi by two, this is going to be the location. So in this way, it is going to go. Is it okay with everybody? Right, and this is yes. nothing but this is nothing but the phase diagram, right? So this represents one of the this represents one of the I mean trajectories. If you take all the trajectories, you get different. Uh, uh, sorry, you, you get the phase portrait, right? And again, see when I eliminate when I eliminate t from these two equations, these two parametric equations. I simply get x squared plus y squared equal to t, right? And you know that x squared plus y squared equal to t is this circle. But how this circle is evolving? If I am not, I mean, uh, even if I am not even considering what is the role of t here, if I take this as an independent equation, then how this curve is evolving, I am not going to get that. Are you getting my point? Right? If you simply consider x squared plus y squared equal to 1 as a curve, not as a trajectory, so then how the trajectory is evolving, that information is going to be missing. Right? But if you consider this in the phase portrait, definitely you need to know about how the trajectory is evolving as well. Is it okay? See, here, Definitely, I started with the initial condition. I started with the initial condition 1, 0. I started with the initial condition 1, 0. I could have started with somewhere else. I could have started somewhere here. Somewhere here. This, 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 should, be, this should be corresponding to pi by 4, where the values are going to be 1 by square root 2. Okay. So, had I started, had I started with pi by 4, it would have evolved like this. It would have evolved. From here, are you getting my point? Right? And yes, sir. Is, is here, here, if I take if I take t to be lying between 0 to 2 pi, I I get this curve. I get this curve. Okay. So if it is more than 2 pi, it is going to be repeated. It is again going to go. Right? Say, suppose I, I had that initial condition as this. I I, I had uh, the initial condition as this. See? T uh, pi by 4 equal to 1 by square root 2, 1 by square root 2. Okay, and suppose I did it simply like say uh, 3 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2. So then what would have happened? My trajectory would have looked like only this. Are you getting my point now? Okay, how the trajectories are going to evolve? What is the role of this t? What is the role of this t lying in an interval? Is that clear to you? Yes, yes sir. sir. Right? Okay. okay. So yes, sir. now, yeah, so, somebody wants to say something? No? Okay. So now let me come back to uh, the uh, visual. Okay, I'm going to show you some visual. Visual corresponding to uh, this solution. For that, uh, if you have MATLAB, and nowadays there are many open software, Scilab is also there, uh, there is a script uh, written by some, initially it was written by Rice, uh, some Rice University professor. Okay, so it is a very handy tool. 
Uh, when I started, I think in 2014 or 2012, I exactly don't remember. It was called P Plan 7, Phase Plan, P Plan 7 by 7 log M. So now this one is not compatible with the uh, new versions of uh, MATLAB. So uh, I have it, P Plan 9. I have this one. You can check in internet. You can check in internet. You can easily get it. So if you have MATLAB, uh, then you can easily plot the trajectories. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what happens. So in fact, what happens if you run this script? So then it shows you a panel. It shows you a panel. So in that panel, in that panel, what happens? So there are, I mean, uh, like I said, the panel will come like this. So firstly, they will ask you for the value of the dx dt and dy dt. So if I plug in this uh, value, like right, that means the right hand side here. So then it is going to show me all the trajectories. Now, if you want to find out the trajectory corresponding to a particular uh, initial condition, then also it has provisions for showing it. So now in my computer, I'm going to show it to you. Okay, please. Uh, notice it carefully. So, um, so, this one. So, this one is the P plan 9.m. Okay? So, now if I run it, if I run it, then I can see that. This panel has come. Is it? Uh, can everybody see it? this panel? Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let, let me make it bigger. Ah, see, this is this is the x prime. This is y prime. So, for this particular equation, for this particular equation, I have it like two uh, x plus eight y. So I am going to plug in two x plus eight. And this value, this value was minus x minus 2y minus 2 star. And uh, again, let me that the range of x uh, because I already know how it looks like. Let, let me increase it so that it is obviously uh, from minus 5 to 5 plus 5. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to cross So see here. Now it, it, it is it is showing you it is showing you the trajectories. Okay, but the trajectories are not very clear to you. Like uh, how 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 I mean you, you can see it, but here you can see that it is some kind of circular pattern. It is going to uh, oh so, sorry this is this is why. Ah, even now it is not very clear. Okay, so now let me just uh, try to find out the solution corresponding to say the initial value of x. Okay, so I, I give it as minus two one. Okay, so compute. See, it is an ellipse. The trajectory is an ellipse. Okay, so now uh, let me check what happens if my initial condition is a, a minus one. See? Now, is it clear to you how it is evolving? Is it yes. Okay? Yes. Right. So now let me show you another. Uh, and uh, now just a minute. Uh, let me let me again run it. I, I want to. Okay. okay. See here, if you actually want to see how the trajectories are looking like. You, you can simply, yeah, see? You can simply click it and it is going to show you. 
because you may be thinking that uh, all the trajectories are going to look like that. Huh? Only in this portion, it is going to look like this. Okay, only in this portion. See, these are these are all trajectories. But away from that, you will have different patterns. This is okay, everybody. Fine. And you will get to learn. I mean, under what circumstances, what shape the trajectories take. Okay. So now. I am going to put this. Let me run it again. And uh, if you recall, if you recall earlier, we had uh, taken one example where dx dt is equal to 2x plus 3y and dy dt was 2x plus y. Okay, so let me again run it uh, 2x plus 3y and then your x plus y. So now let me let me run it. Run it. Okay. So now let me click it. Huh? How it is going to look like? Your trajectories they look like this. See? Fine. Okay. Some patterns are coming out here. And obviously, I'm, I'm going to discuss about all this stuff. Uh, all this stuff. So basically, how the trajectories are going to behave in the long run. Okay, so that is where we are going to be interested. Okay, so I guess, I guess, I mean, this has given you a uh, fair enough idea. This has given you a fair enough idea about uh, how trajectories look like. Okay, so I mean you get to know more about it uh, later. Don't worry about it. And okay, fine. So now uh, let me come to let me come to plane autonomous system and stability and stability plane autonomous system and stability so uh, did i define an autonomous system to you before no right okay see what is an autonomous system say suppose i consider a system of n I mean, first order uh, differential equations, okay, in n dependent variables, okay. So, suppose it is something like dx1 dt. So, this is as I have done it up here, say uh, g1, x1, x2, up to xn3, and then say dxn dt, this is gn, x1, x2, up to xn3, okay. So uh, now, what is an autonomous system? See here, here you can see that if you look at the right hand side, as I had told you earlier, for for the time being, obviously since we don't know anything about uh, what these these expressions actually look like, because these expressions are nothing but functions of the dependent variable. Also, we we are going to assume that. They are a system of n nonlinear differential equations. Okay, fine. So now, if this independent variable t is not explicitly present on the right hand side, so suppose my system of equations were simply something like something like this, something like this, then I would call this system of equation as an autonomous system of equation. Okay, as an autonomous system. Is it okay with everybody? Fine. And uh, again, from now onwards, from now onwards, the independent variable t, I would like to relate that with time mm -hmm. so that it is easier for you to visualize and understand the concepts. Okay, fine. So now, what is a plan of a system? So if I consider a system of, say, two differential equations, so suppose it is like this. And suppose this is like this, g of x, y. So then you know that 
this is an autonomous system. But uh, <coughs> besides that, because I have uh, considered it in the two-dimensional plan, so this is why this is called a plan autonomous system. Is it okay with everybody? Fine. So far, so good, right? Okay. So now, how you are going to visualize? It? How you are going to visualize it? Okay. Say, uh, suppose, suppose, uh, right now, say, I don't know anything about the solution. Is it okay with everybody? Right now, I don't have any information about the solution, right? But uh, if you consider x and y to be the coordinates of a particle moving in the xy plane, so then, what dx, uh, dt, and dy dt uh, will represent? Velocity. Yes. Velocity, right? So that means I will be able to find a velocity vector. I will be able to find a velocity vector given by simply this in the x vector. Is it okay with everybody? And this will be simply given by fxyi plus gxyj. Is it okay with everybody? Fine. So that means that means what is going to happen now? Say suppose suppose this is my xy plan. This is my xy plan. So then suppose I have a particular point. Say a particular point. Say. Suppose the, the, the location of this point is say x not y. Okay, right? So then if I want to find out the velocity vector, velocity vector at the point x not y not, I am going to simply plug in the values of x not y not in these two functions, right? And this is going to this is going to give me this is going to give me uh, what some values. This this is going to give me some values, uh, like what maybe say p not i plus p not j, right? So now what I can do, simply going p not unit along x-axis and uh, q not unit along y-axis, I can get, I can get a vector like this. Is it okay with everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? So similarly at all the points, similarly at all the points, I can get some vectors and that is going to define a vector field. Fine? Okay? So that means even without even without actually solving this equation, I can have an idea about how the solution is going to look like through this through this equation. Okay? Fine? So now in fluid dynamics, what we do, we actually do like this. Okay. I am what I am going to show you next, I am going to show you a figure corresponding to the velocity vector in a field, I mean in, in the xy plan, in the xy plan, and I am assuming that that velocity is nothing but velocity corresponding to some free flow. Is it okay? Fine. So now I am going to show you this. Okay. See, this is what this is what it is. Okay. Or maybe let me ah. So now you can see that I have been given a vector field, okay, given by this. And uh, these are dx dt and dy dt. So in fact, this represents the vector field for the steady state flow of a fluid around a cylinder of radius one. It is given by this. So now what it is showing, it is showing it is showing the velocity vectors, the red one, the red, red arrowheads, they are nothing but the velocity vectors. So what is going to happen? Say, suppose you release uh, some, some say very light uh, stuff. So suppose I am considering a cork, okay, cork, okay. So suppose this, this is my initial condition, x at time uh, zero is minus q1. So basically, I am releasing a cork at the point minus q1. So then, what is going to happen? The cork is going to flow in the fluid, fine. And this blue line, this blue line is going to show me the trajectory 
of that <laughs> trajectory of that ball. Is it okay with everybody? Fine? Yes, sir. Is it okay with everybody? Okay, fine. So that means when my point, uh, point in that flow field, I mean, it is going to be what? Taken away by the stream, by the current of the flow somewhere. Okay? Now you may be thinking that whenever, whenever I am going to release, whenever I am going to release uh, a cork, it is going to be swayed away by the current of the flow. So, but the thing is that, but the thing is that, that uh, may not be true, that may not be true for all the cases. That may not be true for all the cases. Okay. Now, say, suppose, suppose, in these two equations, the right hand side is zero. The right hand side is zero. Okay. So, what does that mean? What does that mean? If you solve for these two equations, then what happens? So, particle is not moving. So, if you solve for this, I am going to get x equal to constant, say c1, okay, and y equal to constant, some c2, say, right? Okay, so that means what happens? What happens if you release a particle at the point c1, comma c2, then what is going to happen? The particle is going to stay there. It is not going to move at all. Is everybody getting my point? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yes. yes sir. Fine. So definitely, there is not going to be any movement for. So you know that these are nothing but constant solutions we did earlier, right? Finding out constant solution from a given differential equation. If you recall, if you recall. If I if I have differential equation of this form, it will recall something like that. F of x y, right? Say uh, like y at x naught equal to say y naught, right? So if I can find out the constant solution, so that constant solution is going to be in the form of something like y equal to y naught. And what happens? It is a constant solution. So that means the solution is not going to change. So now I hope you have a uh, like say physical idea about the solution when the right hand side is zero or when you have constant solution, right? Okay. So basically, if I consider like say the movement of particles on a plan, so that means for constant solution, if you release a particle in those points corresponding to the constant solution, right? They are not going to move at all. They are going to remain at that location, okay? So now I'm again going to come back to uh, my slide, okay? So now, can you give me one uh, <clears throat> where there is likelihood of uh, finding a constant solution here? Simply looking at the expressions for uh, dx, dt, and dy, dt. Yes, just look at these two expressions. Yes, I can give you one. If x equal to 1, y equal to 0, isn't it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Right? Because the circle is x squared plus y squared equal to 1, so the denominator is 1. This is anyway because y is 0, this is 0, and this you are going to get 1 minus 1. So, 1 does that mean that if you try to release a particle here at this location, 1, 0, right? It is not going to move at all, it is going to stay there. The fluid particle there. Fluid particles or any that or if you release the try to release the cork here, the cork is not going to move from here, right? Similarly, I think minus one zero is also uh, a point like that. Okay, so now let me tell you that those uh, points, those points, 
where you have constant solution, where you have constant solution, they are called stationary or equilibrium. Okay, those points are called equilibrium points or critical points. So now you, whenever you try to solve a system represented by uh, these two equations, these two equations, so you, you have seen that you may have a constant solution, okay? And then number two, you may have solution which is something like an R, which is something like an R. Okay, so it, it is going to it is going to start from somewhere and it is it is it is going to be something like this. Okay, or if you make D tending to infinity, it may go on something like this. It may go on something like this. Okay, and number three. It may be so that uh, you have seen in the example that I had walked up today that it may it may be a closed circuit. It may be a closed circuit. So that means, as you have seen, if if I if I consider axial of t uh, y equal to sine t as the solution of some system of equation, then you know that I mean, what is going to happen? The, this solution is nothing but a periodic solution. So that means whenever you have a closed trajectory, so that means suppose I start at this point, after a while, I am again going to come back to this point. Okay, so now, so that means if I have started at T equal to T naught, and then if after some time T, I have again come back to this, so that means what I am going to have. If x bar is my solution, x t naught is going to be equal to this x t naught plus capital T, right? So that means I may have a periodic solution. Is it okay with everybody? Is it okay with everybody? Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So now what I'm going to do, uh, just uh, let, let, let me show you this inside. Uh, I'll take just one minute. Okay. So this I have already told you. Uh, types of solution, and again remember this, this, these are prerequisites. Okay. Uh, see this P and Q, uh, they are nothing but what I had written as F and G. Okay, fine. So here, so that means dx dt equal to P and dy dt equal to Q. Uh, both P and Q are functions of X and Y. Okay. If P and Q and their first of all partial derivatives are continuous in the reason R of the say XY plan, so then a solution of the plan of the system 2, whatever I have written in the blackboard, uh, which satisfy <coughs> which satisfies an initial condition. So that solution is going to be unique and it is going to be one of the three basic types. So the first type I have already told you a constant solution. A constant solution is something like this. Okay. And the second one, it defines an arc, a plan that uh, a plan curve that doesn't cross itself. Okay. So in this particular case, is in this particular case, in this particular case, when it comes to this, right? This can be a solution of the plan autonomous system, whereas if it crosses itself there, if it crosses itself there. This is this cannot be a solution. Do you have any idea why I mean this cannot be a solution? Can somebody tell you something about this? <clears throat> just just can you give some mathematical expression? What is going to happen at P? Say suppose the car process process at the point P. Twice, so then what is going to happen? See, if you, if you look at this direction and this direction, if you look at this direction and this direction, they are completely different, right? So that means at this point, at this point, in the neighborhood of this point, you are going to get different values, different values of the partial derivatives there. 
Okay, here, here, that continuity criteria for that solution, the continuity criteria uh, for PQ and its derivative, it is not going to be healthy. You please check this. Okay, fine. I am going to give you some more explanation here later. Okay, and again, see, this is this one is not crossing over. This one is this one is periodic. Okay, this one is see, crossing over to some other direction, but this one it is maintaining the same direction, although it has passed through the same point, but this situation is not crossing over. You have to remember that. Okay, so basically, we are going to have three types of solution. One is like a constant solution, the next one is an arc, and the uh, third one is some kind of periodic solution. Okay, so we will, we will show that uh, to you later on. Let me come to let me come to the question of question of stability. Let me come to the question of stability. Yeah, so can somebody uh, like enlighten me? Can somebody enlighten me on the question of stability? Forget about the mathematics part. What is stable? What is unstable? Or what is stable equilibrium? What is unstable equilibrium? See, uh, I have already told you about the constant solutions, right? And again, those points, those points where constant solution occurs, they are called your critical point, stationary point, or equilibrium point, right? So that brings me to the question of stable and unstable equilibrium. Okay. So now, yeah, you, you tell me, uh, what do you mean by stable equilibrium and what do you mean by unstable equilibrium? Yes? Okay, I'll, I'll try to explain. So, uh, can I give one example? Yes, somebody wants to say something? Uh, I want to give one example. Can you be louder? I'm not hearing you clearly. Sir, uh, may I give one example? Yeah, yeah. Can you give one example of? Suppose I am uh, taking a ball uh -huh. and uh, the concave part, and I am putting a, a small ball on this ball. <laughs> and if this ball is stable, means it is not moving or it is not falling, then this ball is stable onto okay. this ball. But if we do this inverse case, means uh, the ball is inside this bowl, then this will be stable. Yes. Okay. So thank you. So I, I, I'm just going to take your example. Say what he is talking about. He is talking about a ball. No, he is talking about a ball like this. Okay. Say so suppose this is a glass ball where, uh, like say, you, you can see what is happening inside or outside for that matter. So now. If I say flip it, if I flip it, so then this ball is going to look like this. Okay. Now suppose I am trying to place a and suppose the, this part, suppose this part of the ball is kind of flat. Okay, so this is this is like a straight line. Hmm? This, this part is like a straight line. Okay. And suppose I am holding a marble here, I am holding a marble here. Okay, I am placing a marble here. Okay. So now, if I introduce some kind of perturbation to the marble, like well, in this direction or this direction, so then what is going to happen? It is going to fall down. It is going to fall down from the top. Is it okay with everybody? It is never going to return to this. Of course, I mean, you can, I mean, manually or with some force, you can, uh, I mean, take it back again there, right? But it is not automatically going to come back to that position, right? So this is an example of unstable equilibrium. Unstable equilibrium, okay? Now, suppose you, the same marble you are placing on the ball, which was not inverted. So then if you give some displacement here, again, say, suppose you, you bring this here, Again, what is going to happen after some kind of oscillation here and there? The, 
this is again going to come back to its original position, right? So this is a case of stable equilibrium. This is a case of stable equilibrium. Okay. So now let us see whether mathematically through the system of this autonomous system, through the system of this autonomous system, whether we can illustrate all these things or not. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. I, yeah, uh, just, uh, I'll, I'll just take another two, three minutes, then I will wind up. Oh, see, we have uh, already talked about, we have already talked about equilibrium point or critical points. Okay, say, suppose, suppose in my phase plan, in my phase plan, say, say, suppose uh, this is this x1, this x1, say, suppose this is a critical point. Okay, now, suppose. I have started from another point ah, because you know that if you place something here, it is not going to move, it is going to remain there at the critical point. Then suppose I am considering I am considering a trajectory here. I am considering a trajectory here which starts at x1. So now the question is whether this is going to come back to this is this this trajectory is going to come back to this critical point. That is number one, uh, number one question. Number two is whether if, he, if this trajectory is not going to come back to this critical point, whether it's still, I mean, as t tends to infinity, whether it is still going to be nearby this critical point or not, and whether this trajectory is never going to come back near this critical point, right? Those are the three questions we are going to ask ourselves and we try to find out the answers to them and then depending upon that answer, we are going to define stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium and again, what kind of solutions, uh, what kind of trajectories represented by the solution of the system of required equation falls under these categories we are going to discuss in Tomorrow's class. Okay, fine. And uh, again, I was telling you about uh, an extra class. So uh, I'm not going to take uh, my class on 5th November. Okay, and that I'm going to compensate by taking one extra class on this Saturday itself. Okay, so please bear with uh, uh, me for that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to send an email uh, connected to that. Okay. So I'll wind up. <laughs>